a while back, as I was there, delving into the lore of an artifact that the players came across, I was so enthralled by it, spent a lot of time creating that thing, and my players, I could see them losing a bit of interest. It was kind of disheartening. But then I remembered. Hello everyone, Evan from Monkey DM here. Tell me if that story sounds familiar. Tonight's finally the night. You're playing D&D. You're super excited. Everything is prepared, you got your dice ready, your maps, everything. The players are coming, they're bringing snacks, tension is high, the dice start rolling, everybody's enjoying themselves. And then an hour in, one player starts to pull out their phone. Another one starts to talk to another. And slowly, the attention to the game starts to fade. And you stand there as the DM. And it's disheartening. Tell me, has this ever happened to you? Let me know in the comments below. Now onto the juicy stuff. As human beings, we have a limited attention span, especially nowadays with easily digestible media that spikes your dopamine harder than a good cup of coffee. But I digress. How do we make sure our players pay attention to the game? Well, the first tip, put the phones away. I know, it's simple and said like that it almost seems dumb, but it's really important. In our phones, we have so much information accessible to us, be it via Instagram, freaking Reddit or other websites, which spike us with the media that shoots up our dopamine and we want to check it out. So if you put the phones away, then your players have a lot less of an incentive to check them out. The only exception that I allow to this rule at my table is if we need to check a spell as a spellcaster or if there's some rule clarification to do. But otherwise, no phones. Now, you might be wondering, but Evan, I play online. I use Roll20 or I use Foundry, which everybody knows is superior. I can't really tell my players to put the phones away. I, there must be something else. Well, first of all, yes, you can tell your players to put the phones away, even for an online session. But yes, there are other tips. And that brings me to my next point. Tip number two, which is to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and to make sure to subscribe. No, I'm just kidding. Tip number two, which is a common tip in D&D, but talk to your players in the game and outside of the game. What do I mean? Let me explain. Inside the game, for example, let's say you're narrating something and you have a player who's not paying attention and you notice that. Call them out on it. Not directly in an aggressive way, but for example, a simple nudge could be, so, John, what will your character do now? And John will look up and if he wasn't paying attention, he'll be like, oh, sorry, what, what happened? And that's the moment where you can tell them, Look, John, you're a really good player, uh, but I saw you were a bit distracted. You think you can focus back on the game for a little bit, or do you need a break? Something like that. Try to make it a um, compliment sandwich, let's call it, where you give out a compliment, you put the behavior to fix, and then another compliment. It's easier to digest this way. Make sure you don't come off as aggressive, because that's the last thing you want as DM, of course, but, you know, call them out on it. Then there is the out of game conversation. This is where you can have a heart to heart with your player. This is very important in that sense that when you're outside the table, it's just you and that player. There is no judging from the other people at the table. And it feels a lot less like you're putting them on the spot and trying to criticize them in front of everyone. It's just a one to one conversation between two adults or, you know, so what you're going to want to do is take that player apart and tell them, hey, look, I put a lot of efforts in my games, you know, DMing takes time. I have to prepare the word, the setting. And I see that these days you're quite distracted during our sessions. And I have to admit, it doesn't feel really great for me. Um, do you think you could fix that? Something along those lines, make them understand, you know, and eight times out of 10, that player will understand and try to do better next time. And don't be afraid to... After another session, if you see that they did indeed do better, go and compliment them about it. Take them at the end of the session, you're like, oh, wow. Yeah, I saw you were not on your phone that uh, today and that was awesome, man. Thank you. Easy way to set it up and you reinforce the behavior that way. If you are a player watching this, I encourage you to pay attention during your games. The GM puts a lot of work into creating the world, so 
A nice thing to do is to pay attention and try not to be distracted. I know it's hard sometimes, trust me. Now, tip number three, which has nothing to do with the players, but with your GMing styles, and that is to make it about the players. At the end of the day, we're all humans, meaning that the most important person in our lives is ourself. We all have a tendency for empathy. I mean, most of us do, but you know, at the end of the day, the person we care about the most is ourselves. And as such, when we're playing D&D, the moments we love the most is the moments that involve our character. And that's normal, that's perfectly fine. But if you want a player to be more engaged in your story, one thing that you can do is to make sure that that player is involved in the story, literally. Let me give you an example. As DMs, we tend to fall in love with our creation. We create new NPCs and words and lore that realistically players will probably never encounter. But we do it anyway. You know, we have million ideas running through our head. We want to show everything to everyone and we're so engaged with it. And sometimes we tend to lose touch with our players a little bit. You know, a while back, as I was there delving into the lore of an artifact that the players came across, I was so enthralled by it, you know, I spent a lot of time creating that thing and my players, I could see them, like one of them losing a bit of interest and it was kind of disheartening. But then I remembered, make it about the players. So what did I do? Well, simply asked all the players to give me an arcana check. All of a sudden it's like, oh wow, what's going on? Why do I have to roll dice? Something's happening and the players are more engaged. After that, on top of the arcana check, those who failed had to make a wisdom saving throw or take some damage because trying to recollect information about this obscure artifact was painful for their minds. And all of a sudden when there's damage involved, when there's checks involved, I can tell you the players were a lot more on their toes and a lot more willing to receive the information because they were active participants in the story. And that's the best way of storytelling. That's why D&D is so awesome. Fast forward to the end of the session and everybody's having a wonderful time. Everybody's enjoying it and I'm loving it myself. So outside of this particular example, a good thing to keep in mind is to always have the players involved. Be it simply conversation between the characters, be it conversation with NPCs, ability checks that have to involve players, Make it dynamic and make sure the players are involved with it. Most of the best D&D stories that we all remember are story, arc, story arcs which revolve around the characters. And that's a wonderful thing. Tip number four. You know how sometimes in high school or college you have a teacher that's like, we're going to have a four hour class today and there's not going to be any breaks. And he thinks that's a great idea. And every single student in that class knows this is a terrible idea. Yeah, ever had that happen? I know I did. Well, it's the same with D&D. Don't get me wrong, D&D is a whole lot more entertaining than math class, but we still need breaks. Our brain can only process so much information at a time before exploding. As humans, we only have so much focus and attention we can exert even for stuff that we love before it's too much. So with that in mind, take breaks. What I do recommend is to take a break about every two hours. So if you have a four hour session, one break in the middle, that's perfect. Six hour session, you know, one break every hour and a half to two hours. It's great for the players because it allows them to unwind a little bit, relax, talk about other things with other players. As a DM, it's great because it allows you to relax your voice a little bit, you know, maybe sift through your notes if the players derail the story a little bit. They never do that. Breaks in general are great because you can snack. Another thing that you can do during breaks is to make sure to subscribe. Okay, I'm kidding. You're probably done it by now, I'm sure. Those were four tips to make sure that your players pay more attention in your games. Make sure to apply them correctly. Let me know in the comments below if it helped you, if it worked. If there's anything you want to fix. If you want some tips on how to be a better GM, I have a video right here for that. If you want to subscribe, it's right here. And that was it for me. Have a good day. Bye-bye.